last lesson we talked about the hinge theorem. So today we're going to talk about um, the converse of the hinge theorem, and this is still in section 5-6. So first let's uh, look at a reminder of what the hinge theorem says. If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angles are not congruent, then the larger side is across from the larger included angle. You'll notice very similarly we have theorem 5-6-2, which is the converse of the hinge theorem. So what this says is that if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the third sides are not congruent to each other, then the larger included angle is across from the longer side. Notice that these two are very similar, uh, but they still are almost exact opposites. First notice in the hinge theorem, uh, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angles are not congruent. Notice we have this, and in the converse we have the third sides are not congruent to each other. And then lastly we finish off with, um, still being opposite, then the larger side is across from the larger included angle. And then down here we have the larger included angle is across from the longer third side. So they are almost exact opposites, um, and that is what converse would mean is the exact opposite. Now let's actually look at it graphically what that would look like. Now I did move the converse of the hinge theorem up, um, so all I did was move this up um, a couple inches. So we have two triangles here, A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Now with the converse, we need to know first that we have um, two sides are congruent. So we have one side is congruent, and then let's say we have another side congruent in two triangles. Now what this converse says is that if we are told, let's say that AC is a length of 20, and let's say XZ is a length of 15. What the converse tells us is that the longer side, which is AC in this case, will have a bigger included angle, meaning the included angle will be directly across, which in this case is angle B, and we're talking about the included angle down here, which is angle Y. It means that the measurement of angle B is greater than the measurement of angle Y. And that's all the converse is saying. An example using the converse, we have to compare the measurement of angle EGH and the measurement of EGF. Uh, so looking at this, I see two triangles. Um, now, we go through and we can see, well, we edit our picture and we see that 12 is gonna be congruent to 12. So I'm just going to write some stuff down just so you get in your own notes. FG, uh, segment FG is going to be congruent to segment HG. So that's one side. Another side that I see is right in here. So I see that EG is congruent to EG. And again, to remind you, this is through the reflexive property. Now we're looking, and there's not much more that we can put on our picture, but what we're trying to do is compare the measurement of EGH. So that looks like this angle down here, and we are also trying to compare EGF, which is right there. So we have these uh, orange and purple angles we need to look at. Now luckily, we see we have a congruent side and a congruent side we want to talk about the included angle, which is the orange, which is the purple as well. And so we look at this, and we can look at the side lengths and see a 10 and we see a nine. So we see that since 10 is not uh, congruent to nine, uh, but 10 is greater than nine, we can say that the length of EF is greater than the length of EH. And so because of this, we can then say that the measurement of, well, since 10 is greater, we look at its uh, opposite included angle, which is the measurement of angle, oops, the measurement of angle FGE, um, or in other words, the measurement of angle EGF, sorry about that, it's the same angle that we we're talking about, um, will be greater than the measurement 
of angle E G H and all of this is because 10 is bigger than a 9 this is exactly what the converse tells us so this is the converse of the hinge theorem another type of problem they will be given is to find the range of values for k so I see we have a two triangles again we have the top and the bottom uh, we do notice that k is within the angle and so I'm going to go along and try to edit my picture any way I can we already know that LP is congruent to LM but we also know that LN is congruent to LN uh, it's the same same line it's reflexive property so because we have one side and two sides congruent we can instantly use the hinge theorem or the converse uh, so again just so you have it in here we can use the hinge or the converse we don't know which one we're going to use quite yet then we look at our picture and it looks like um, well we don't really know what this included angle is but we do know the other side length we know for sure what the side lengths are so what we're going to use is the converse um, if we were told stuff about the angles we would use the actual hinge theorem so we're going to use the converse and what the converse says is that the bigger number the bigger side which is 19 will have the bigger included angle so what that means is that 38 will be bigger then 5k minus 12 and now we just go ahead and solve for k we can add 12 add 12 and 50 is greater than 5k I'm gonna move that right up here just so we have more room and solving for k we divide by 5 we divide by 5 it says that 10 is greater than k or as I like to do as I rewrite it as k is less than 10 that's one range that we have is that k has got to be less than 10 All right. another one that we need to set up and this one is similar to the hinge theorem is we're talking about the measurements of angles every single angle ever in a triangle I mean, really any angle has to be at least zero you have to have an angle that is at least zero degrees otherwise it doesn't exist so then we also say that 5k minus 12 has to be at least greater than zero and now we solve for k in the same way we add 12 add 12 5k is greater than 12 and lastly we divide by 5 to be given that k is greater than uh, it's going to be a decimal answer but you're going to get 2.4 what this means is that k has to be greater than 2.4 but less than 10 so you could write it in that fashion of 2.4 is less than k is less than 10. That's a possible answer, or you could actually write it out as k is between 2.4 and 10. And so now we have our two answers. And both of these examples are types of problems that you will see. Um, again, I hope you understand. But if you had any questions, make sure you mark them down. Uh, good luck, and see you tomorrow.